Questions, questions. How did Kirito survive against Heathcliff in Aincrad? How did he get up against Sugo? How did he arrive in the stadium with his Aincrad outfit and ordinal scale? How did the Night Sky Sword got bigger? How did this Vorpal Strike reach Chudelkin from so far away? How did he use dual wielding skills in a world where dual wielding does not even exist? What do yellow eyes signify? The core of all these questions is what is incarnation and how does it work? And today, I will answer those questions in depth. Welcome everyone, it's me GamerTorque and this is Sword Art Online Explained, your source for the most reliable Sword Art Online information. But going back to incarnation, the name of the concept was introduced in the third season of the anime Sword Art Online Alicization, more specifically in volume 10 Alicization Running, the Zephylia flower scene at the academy. Depending on the translation you're following, you may not have noticed there since Yen Press and the anime subtitles used quote unquote meaning with the capital M instead of actually using the term for some reason, but if you at least watch the first half of Alicization you have definitely heard incarnation and the derivations of it such as the incarnate arms for example. If you're a fan of Excel World you're already very accustomed to the term to begin with but who am I kidding if you're looking for an explanation to the concept and how it works, chances are you're following the SAO anime where the producers can't be bothered with explaining concepts properly. Now, I'll begin explaining with the Alicization content, but first, to avoid confusions, I need to distinctively separate the three forms of incarnation we have. All in all, incarnation is the blanket term of overwriting the system with willpower, however, that is an extreme simplification of the concept. And there are actually different showcases of incarnation throughout the series slash timeline, so let me clarify that. First one is what I usually refer to as quote unquote proto-incarnation or a primitive form of overwriting the system. This is rather an unknown unintended side effect and quote unquote exploit in the system that you can see pre elicization content. In most cases when people like Fox and Anime try to hype as Kirito God Mode is where you can observe incarnation but it's not just limited to that. For example, while Kirito defying death for a couple of seconds against Heathcliff is incarnation, so is Asuna breaking the paralysis a couple of seconds earlier. While the yellow eyes is an anime original concept that showcases an intense use of incarnation, incarnation is not solely limited to the eyes. Such basic forms of incarnation can also be observed in season 1 episode 10 for example when Kuredil is about to kill Kirito and Asuna is racing towards the valley to save him. In the novels, it is very much stated that Asuna most certainly was moving at speeds above the given system limits to reach Kirito's location, which was again a hint of this early form of incarnation. I'll explain how this works in a logical manner in a bit, but since our starting point for the concept will be Elicization, I'll get back to this in a bit. The second form of incarnation is visible in Elicization and to a certain extent in the anime original content that is the Ordinal Scale movie. This is where the unintended exploit of devices like Nerve Gear and Amosphere become an actual system level feature due to the hardware involved. Can't exactly state things for the Ogma from Ornal Scale due to lack of extensive material with Ornal Scale being an anime only story, but looking towards the Soul Translator and how Underworld works, which was built with the help of the mind behind Ornal Scale, Professor Tetsuhiro Shigemura, you can make the connections yourself there. The second form of incarnation is a result of a multi-layered virtual world and is an inherent part of the environment rather than a glitch or an exploit. The third form of incarnation would be the Axel world iteration of the concept, but for the sake of clarity and not wanting to stray into the speculation of possible connectedness of both series, Axel world and Sword Art Online, I won't be going into that in this video. So, with these three distinctive forms clarified, let's go back to our starting point, elicization, and the core question, how does incarnation work? The answer to this does not lie within Underworld, but rather on Ocean Turtle back in real life. While it's an occurrence within the Underworld, the concept stems from the structure of the entire hardware built up that runs the simulation. Underworld as a simulation consists of two separate layers that are synced to each other. First one is the code basis of the entire simulation. You know, this is your average computer program that is completely based on black and white, ones and zeros, definitive logic based process. But the problem was that the simulation Wrath had in mind was huge and had to be super realistic for the intents of creating an artificial floodlight as well as for observation purposes. So. 
On top of the simulation code base, they built a second layer, the main visualizer utilizing the Seed Nexus in order to ease up on the content creation process since the Seed Nexus came with tons of features. These two layers, the simulation code base and the main visualizer work in sync to run Underworld smoothly. However, the way the main visualizer works is quite intricate. You know how demanding rendering can be. And if you're creating a photorealistic world in the scale of Underworld, chances are you'll be short on processing power. But Wrath already had the solution, which is also the core reason for the existence of Incarnation. Main Visualizer does not just render what is supposed to be there. To save up on processing power, it utilizes the memories of hundreds of thousands of Underworld inhabitants instead. Before the Johnny Black attack back at the Dicey Cafe, Kirtu tries to simplify the process to Shinon and Asuna and I believe it illustrates the basic concepts quite nicely. Look at the nearest object to you carefully, observe it, you know, it's either your PC monitor or your smartphone presumably in this case. Now close your eyes, no matter how weak, chances are you'll see or rather feel a mirage, an echo of that exact scene embedded in your mind. That visual does exist somewhere there in your mind. The main visualizer of Underworld utilizes exactly this concept. It does not always render objects on its own based on code all the time, but also utilizes these memories stored in floodlights to create the world. This may sound like an easily exploitable function, but that just means you're thinking in extreme, you know, heroic fiction kind of way, which is another realistic reflection of the concept as a whole, and this would have been clearer if Elicization episode 9 and 10 with the Zephylia flowers took time to explain the concept rather than the extreme possibilities it allows. Think from a conceptual level, not an individualistic level. Imagine an elevator, let's say. How many times do you actively think about the elevator of your apartment building? Chances are, you simply don't. You're barely conscious when you step in an elevator every day, since all you do is hit one of the two same buttons every single time, your floor or the ground floor. But the image of that elevator exists in your mind as is, so does it exist in the minds of the other 200 or so people in the same apartment. It's a very unconscious thought to begin with, so it's quite easy to come up with an objective view of the elevator based on the subjects and an average of those. In the case of the Zephylia flowers, it was said to be a flower that never bloomed in the Northern Empire. Everyone at the Academy and in the Northern Empire had this thought somewhere in their minds. And while the thought did not necessarily need to be true in the first place, so many people having it as a quote-unquote fact in the back of their minds simply had led to the flowers never blooming in the Northern Empire in the first place. Kirto wanted to challenge this fact, and while he was lucky that it was such an isolated case of who the fuck cares in relation to a specific type of flowers, Kirto had already failed two times at making them bloom, despite believing and praying for it with Yuju, and even the third time they grew, they were very scrawny before they were destroyed by Humbert and Rayos. And you may say that they eventually bloomed, but pay attention to how they had bloomed. Kirto did not believe, did not pray for the flowers to bloom. He believed in the voice of Charlotte, in the entire garden full of spatial resources to help the flowers bloom. Of course, this also ties in with how much you can actually truly believe in something too. You see, it's not as easy as I believe. Most of the time, true belief is not an active decision you make yourself. After destroying your phone with a sledgehammer, no matter how much you actively believe your phone will still work after gluing it together, inside you already know full well it won't. You can challenge Messi on a one-on-one -on -one and believe you'll win, but do you really? No, all you believe is that he'll beat your ass. Most beliefs are unconscious ones and they are the strongest ones, you know, things like love, hope, anger, desperation, simple focused emotions. And that's why you look over to Elicization episode 22 when Kirito is using his Warpal Strike on Chudelkin, it just works. Because at that point of time, there's absolutely nothing in Kirito's mind but his Black Swordsman persona from Aincrad, and the one identity of that persona is survival, that primal instinct of survival pushing Kirito to use the skill he had used hundreds of times to get out of terrible situations, one of his iconic moves, Warpal Strike. 
An act of sheer desperation filled with so much intent and while it wouldn't have achieved anything if tried in real life of course, does actually work in Underworld because the reality the main visualizer perceives of that room stems from Kirito's memories at that point and desperation which brings the impossible Warple strike of Kirito into reality from his memory and imagination. This is possibly one of the best examples due to it being a single burst of incarnation to explain the circumstances, but going further, many other things can be explained too. The power of the nobles and people like Golgoroso, Sortilina, Volo, confidence is a huge source of belief and it is the key factor that enhances their individual abilities. And just like the Warple Strike moment, Incarnation is the reason why Kirito manages to dual wield as a, you know, final attempt against the administrator despite not having enough object authority or despite the fact that dual blade skills not even existing in Underworld. It's because at that point, his Black Swordsman persona takes over completely in his mind and that is all the main visualizer sees. And while this only grants him a temporary overwrite, the results of the temporary overrides are lasting. While his black worm code fades away as his thought process returns to normal, the damage done by his dual blade skills that did not exist inherently within the world but only his memories in the first place remain in the world as is. And that is how incarnation works in Underworld. It's not a get out of jail free card but a realization of an entire thought process that is not all that much in your conscious control. Whether positively or negatively and well, Kirito has certainly tasted the negative side of the blade at the end of episode 24. But that leaves us with another question. Hey Gamer Turk, you talked about these thoughts and beliefs. Sure STL can read them, but how is it possible with the basic nerve gear or atmosphere? Glad you asked, because that is the exact reason why I separated Incarnation from the previous uses like in Aincrad and Fairy Dance Arcs. There's a reason why I refer to these as Proto-Incarnation because technically speaking, it's much more simple. While a Nerve Gear slash Atmosphere does not connect to your extensive floodlight like the STL does, it still directly connects to your brain, the brain that handles literally everything going on in your body, you know, tons of signals of pure electrical impulses flying left and right all the time. Of course, something like Nerve Gear is more or less a simple program, it does not consist of any extensive knowledge of the brain, so naturally it only uses the signals that are directly relevant to it, you know, walking, breathing, moving, swinging swords, etc. Also, it does not allow you to move if you're paralyzed, it pushes more weight onto you if you carry items above your limit, you know, utilizes restrictive limits on you per its programming, right? Now, let me ask you a question. In a simple program, any program really, what happens if you provide an invalid input? The program encounters an error because it just doesn't know what to do with the input in most cases like playing games and pressing an unmapped button, you won't even experience anything at all because it's a seamless process in the background. In something like Microsoft Excel, if you write a wrong formula, you get an error pop-up. You click on an app that is not installed properly, you get a prompt for reinstalling. If you accidentally clicked on your Internet Explorer, well, <laughs> you gotta wait 5 minutes for it to successfully launch so you can actually close it. The last one, yeah, it's not an invalid input, it's a perfectly valid input, but what I'm trying to highlight is the fact that whether valid or invalid, there's always a processing involved whatever the input is. Imagine opening a hundred Google Chrome tabs, well, the good luck to your poor old RAM, you effectively clogged up your PC by providing 100 separate inputs in the form of 100 clicks and now, albeit temporarily, your PC is effectively dying, barely able to process anything. Well, incarnation in Aincrad, for example how Kirito does not die instantly against Heathcliff, can be interpreted exactly the same way. When do we see signs of overwriting the system? When characters are in emotionally dire situations. What happens when a human is emotionally unstable? Their brain goes over time. You shake, you think of thousands of things, various signals are sent to everywhere in your body and when all of these signals are being sent out and intercepted by the system for processing, whether they are valid or not, doesn't matter. The system becomes overloaded with various input and effectively stalls and that is why incarnation in pre elicization content is simply an exploit, an unintended glitch that should not have happened but still did. 
But I hope this did clarify the concept of incarnation for you, whether in Elicization or previous content. I have a ton more Sword Art Online content here on my channel and unlike most other foxes who provide you 2-3 sentences from the wiki with 5 minutes of misguided interpretations, I actually do read the book so I can bring you the most accurate information. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, the bell icon and smash that like button so we can spread the truth about Sword Art Online to more people. As always, thank you very much for watching, a huge thanks to my patrons and my YouTube channel members as usual and I'll see you next time. Stay cool.